And some of you may remember from last semester, we didn't talk about hydrogen ion too much. We talked about hydronium ion because an aqueous solution You put an H plus in there, what's it going to look for? It doesn't like to sit there by itself, it's going to look for electrons. It's going to see a couple of them sitting on the nearest water molecule. So it's going to attach itself. And these guys are going to say, what's happening here? So, uh, and remember we talked about things like uh, one hydrogen ion and four water molecules surrounding it to stabilize it and all that sort of stuff. So those are, we just, instead of putting that many water molecules, we just put one more water molecule with the hydrogen. So this is, sometimes I'll revert back to just saying H+, plus, but most of the time from now when I talk about the hydrogen ions and acid solution, I'll say H3O+, plus, unless I'm really in a hurry and I'm running out of chalk or something, but I brought it in. So we don't have to worry about that. Okay. So let's start off with a typical weak acid. And I always start off with acetic acid. Notice when I was saying one of the reasons for rejecting the Arrhenius theory, I talked about what happened to acetic acid. It's one of our most famous weak acids. And I just went through this with the 1A class where we got into a little bit of organic nomenclature. That's the carboxylic acid group that says that you have a weak, or sorry, they have an organic acid, not a weak one. But it turns out that all the organic acids are weak acids. They're not on our list of strong acids. So we can write this as acetate ion with hydrogen. We definitely know that's an acid. Here the hydrogen at the front shows it's an acid. CO2H at the end with the hydrogen at the end shows it's an acid. So those are the ways we can recognize acids. And almost all of them are going to be acids and they're organic acids, and those are most of the ones we talk about. Does that say CH2 at the front there? Right here? Three. Oh, there's one, two, three. There. Thank now you. Can read it. Or at least I can read it. <laughs> That's good. Okay. So, these are different ways of writing acids. We're not going to be worried about that because we're going to do the mathematics of how does it dissociate. And one of my favorite questions, which we'll get to answer in a little while, uh, what's the concentration of acetic acid in 0.1 molar acetic acid? 0.1 molar. So if I forgot about 10 to the minus 8 gives you a pH of 8. When I ask a question like that, the answer is not the obvious one. It's not 0.1. Why is it not 0.1? Because it dissociates after you mix it up. So the point one, and I'll come back to this in a minute, is the stoichiometric concentration. It tells you how you prepared it, but it doesn't tell you the actual acetic acid concentration because we're going to calculate it. <coughs> so the first step is we need a balanced chemical equation. I'm going to use this form. And I'm going to use Bronsted Lowry. And there's my dissociation reaction. Okay. I can ident identify conjugate acid base pairs. This one has hydrogen ion, this one doesn't. You say, are you sure? Well, I count all the hydrogens and I look at the charge, and sure enough, this one has an extra H plus. Otherwise, it wouldn't have a zero charge. So this is acid one and 
As I said, some folks use A and B to label the pairs. And here's an extra H plus compared to this. So this is base partner two. Conjugate acid base pairs. Okay. There's, there's two. Yeah, we got. Oh, base two. I said base. Oh, I got base. I got base on too many bases there. I was ready to play the violin or something. <laughs> acid. Oh. There we go. And we've got our uh, association equation. Let's write an equilibrium expression. Because that's the next step in the equilibrium problem. That's what we're going to do. If I wrote something down. Did not put in water because it's the solvent, and we don't include solvents. And this equilibrium expression has a subscript A for talking about the equilibrium, or that equilibrium constant is referred to as a case of A. The subscript A says it's an acid dissociation constant. And that's because, what do acids do? Increase the hydrogen ion concentration. There's hydrogen ion concentration. Notice if I do a radius, I get the same sort of thing, except I write H+. Plus. This is still the anion. If it would have been acetic acid, that's the anion. Mm -hmm. And there's HA. The water didn't appear in the Arrhenius way of doing it. So the original paper is exactly the same. In the old days, it is, it is in the old days because we don't bother putting water in there. Ammonia, I said, was the weak base. Most nitrogen-containing organic compounds are going to behave as weak bases. And then you have something like amino acids. It has an NH2 group, and it also has an acid group. It can behave as either an acid or a base. We won't worry about those too much. In fact, we won't worry about all of this. Somewhere you might have to worry about it. Okay. Dissociates. This is the same product Arrhenius said he had to have. And you recognize it's a base because you made hydroxide <coughs> ions. Right? 
Acids give you hydrogen ions in solution. Bases give you hydroxide ions. And uh, you can't have both hydroxide ions and hydrogen ions in the same solution because they would get together to give you water. Okay, we talked about that when we talked about the wrong equation in the SOAR when we talked about the dissociation of thiosetamine. Again, looking at the terminology here, I see some more conjugate acid base pairs. Try to be a little more careful here. This has one more H plus than this. So this is a base. This is an acid. This is the first pair. And this has one more H plus than this. So this is what? So again, when, whether we're talking about acid or bases dissociating, we always have an acid plus a base gives you a new acid and a new base. And the big difference is when we're talking about bases, we're getting more hydroxide. When we're talking about acids, we get more hydrogen ions. And what else can we do with this? We can write an equilibrium expression. <clears throat> Let's write the equilibrium expression. Yes? I'm just a little confused. Why is the um, H2O acid? And over there, it's the base. Good question. I'm going to come back to that in just a minute. OK. So first of all, let's write the equilibrium expression. So we can go on here. Dissociation constant. Okay. Now, somebody just said, and that's one of the things I'm going to get to, and I'm getting to it right now. Here I call water a base, or I call it an acid. Which is it? Well, here was a stronger acid, so water behaved as a base. Over here, I have a stronger base, so water behaved as an acid. Oh, that's what happens. In other words, we call it amphoteric. That means it can behave as either an acid or a base, depending on whether you combine it with a stronger acid or a stronger base. The analogy to what we did in 1A, we talked about something like arsenic. If we combined it with something like fluorine, which is more electronegative, it behaved as a metal. If I combined it with something like sodium, which is more metallic, it behaved as a nonmetal. Same sort of behavior. And so, what happens if I put water together? How about that? So it behaves as an acid and a base. Which one's the acid, which one's the base? You don't know. But this is called dissociation of water. It's also called autoprotolysis of water. What? is another one that they use. There are all sorts of terms to refer to that. Now you want to write the equilibrium expression. Okay, you've written something. This is the time to write it because when you go on the quiz and you want to write it, you say, what the heck did, I, what did he write? I can't remember anything. But if you look at this, you say, oh, What goes 
the denominator? Nothing. Nothing. No one? Okay, nothing. You don't do a denominator, right? Because these are the liquids. That's the dissociation constant for water. And this is the only dissociation. The other dissociation constants, they'll either be given to you in a problem, or you'll be given data to find the dissociation constant, but this one I expect you to remember. It's, we usually just say it's exactly one, but actually it changes with temperature, but we're not going to worry about that. The dissociation constant of water is 1 times 10 minus 14, period. Now I'm going to do an equilibrium problem. I got these 